Say cheese. When you hear this phrase, what is it that first comes to mind? I'm sure most of you answer that a picture is about to be taken. Nowadays, it seems that everybody always has a digital camera in hand, especially if they're going somewhere significant. Have you ever been somewhere so beautiful that you just want to capture the perfect moment and show it to everybody, but for some reason you have a really hard time? Well, hopefully that will not be the case after I teach you the three key elements of composing a great picture. I've been researching this topic for quite some time now because I myself am an amateur photographer and I'm also signed up for an online digital photography school. It is my hope that I can pass my knowledge on to you about taking good images. Today I will illustrate for you the three key elements of composing a beautiful photograph, which is creating simplicity, choosing a focal point, and applying the rule of thirds. The first key element of composition that I will be explaining is creating simplicity in your picture. Simplicity is the best way to present a clear and precise message in a photograph. There are many ways to create simplicity within a picture. According to Peter Essenberger, Arizona Highway Director of Photography, the best way to make your picture simple is do not put a lot of elements into your picture because it will take away from the main subject. And also when you have one main subject, it will draw in the viewer's eyes. Also, when you move in closer to your subject, uh, that is the, common, uh, the most commonly used method to creating the simple picture. Photojournalist Robert Kappa said, if your pictures aren't good enough, you're not close enough. Filling your frame with the essential elements of your picture is key. Also, a shallow depth of field will make the subject stand out from a busy background. Uh, so you can really see that, especially with the picture of the little shoes, um, there's not a busy background, so it's not taking away from the main subject, which is the shoes, and the, um, the picture of the road. I mean, yeah, like, there is uh, land and crops in there, but it's really simple. There's just one main road, and there's a lot of solid uh, colors in there. So now that you know how to create a simple picture, let me explain how to incorporate a strong focal point. A strong focal point in your picture captures the viewer's attention and can tell a story about where the picture was taken and who was there. Okay. Um, usually, it is really important to just have one main focal point in your picture because, as I said before, it can take away from um, like the main, like the main subject if you have more than one element in there. It's just going to get too busy and the viewer's eyes are just going to wander all over your picture. Um, if you do decide though to have more than one subject in your picture, just make sure that nothing is pulling away from anything because it's really important that when you're looking at a picture that you don't have to do research to find out what you're looking at. And uh, also you want to create a resting place for the eyes. So with this picture you can tell that where your eyes are mostly resting is in the center of the picture which is uh, the flowers uh, middle and uh, there are six techniques according to Darren Rose online digital photography school that can enhance the focal point of an image. The position of your image is uh, really important because you want to place it in a prominent position. The focus, uh, use depth of field to, enhan to enhance your focal point. Blur, when you create blur it actually creates movement in your picture and uh, size, you want to have a really like a large focal point, that way your eyes will obviously go straight there. Color, if you use contrasting colors, it'll set your focal point away from other elements in the image. And lastly, shape. Contrasting shapes uh, can make your subject stand out. So with this, you can tell that uh, everything is basically covered. At the bottom of the picture, there's blur, and that creates the movement um, so that your eyes go directly into the middle. You have the contrasting shapes, the colors, and uh, it's obviously a large image. Alright, and now that you know the importance of simplicity and having a strong focal point, I'm going to introduce to you the most important element with any photograph, the rule of thirds. Using the rule of thirds to compose your photograph will give you a well-balanced picture and an, an intersecting point in which the viewer eyes will naturally be attracted to. To use the rule of thirds, Peter Essenberger, Arizona Highways Director of Photography states, to apply the rule of thirds, imagine the scene in your viewfinder divided into thirds both horizontally and vertically. 
similar to a tic-tac-toe grid laid over the scene. So this is basically the rule of thirds, and you want to think about this before you even take your picture. And uh, using the rule of thirds really helps you avoid uh, symmetrical composition in your picture, and also creates a satisfying proportion and space around the main subject. Um, Essenberger, Essenberger also states, a common compositional faux pas occurs when the horizon is positioned directly through the middle of the frame. Bisecting the scene, or bisecting the scene. Utilizing the rule of thirds, the horizon is placed near the grid line. This will lower or right the horizon in the frame and give emphasis either to dramatic sky, dramatic sky or interesting foreground. So here you can see that he actually moved the horizon up in the picture to give more emphasis to the ground below rather than the sky. But if say, it was a cloudy day and have really interesting um, shapes in the sky, you could actually lift up your camera and show more sky rather than ground to give more emphasis to the sky. Right. And um, when using the rule of thirds, Darren Rose, uh, Digital Photography School, says the two most important questions to ask yourself are. What are the points of intersection in the shot, and what am I, where am I intentionally placing them? So here you can tell that obviously uh, the bee on the flower is not in the middle of the picture. As if it was, it definitely would not have the same dramatic effect. In the bottom, the house on the on the ocean, if it was in the middle of the picture. It would take away from uh, the clarity of the water and the sky in the background. And with the simplicity of the shot, also your eye does go directly to the main subject. So today I've illustrated for you the three key elements of creating a well-rounded picture by creating simplicity, using a strong focal point, and applying the rule of thirds. As you can see, taking a memorable photograph is way more than just holding a camera in front of your face and taking a picture. It requires visualizing your image in your head before you even snap the shot. I hope you all learned how to create a well-rounded picture today, and hopefully you will love to learn, learn to love photography as much as I do. Michael, what did you think? Um, I thought she had a good attention grabber by saying she actually smiled. <laughs> um, she has good sources. Um, she has many pictures that are clear and visual and. Um, the only thing that when she would flip off the paper, she would just read through it and not like look at us. But when she was transitioning to the picture, she she would talk about it and then look at us. So like that part. Overall, I thought it was a good speech. All right. Uh, I thought the topic was very nicely identified. The the attention device is okay. Uh, the thesis is excellent. The preview is really solid. All the organizational stuff is very good. I thought you did a very good job pre presenting su supporting material for the speech as well. Um, I think a couple of things need a little bit more explanation. Uh, depth of field, for instance, I'm not quite as clear on as I could be. I thought the rule of thirds at first was a little uh, unclear, but the more examples that you showed, the clearer it became what you were talking about. And I thought you did an excellent job of integrating the visuals with that to make that point. Um, you know, uh, I don't have a lot of criticisms of the content of the speech or the visuals. I thought they were pretty solid. The presentation, uh, you're really well prepared. You need to relax a little bit and talk to the audience a bit more. That's not a big thing on this assignment, but for the next one, that's really what we're going to be spending time on. Okay, so. <laughs>